Welcome to AC Practical 8.1 Parallel AC Circuits. Uh, Dr. Ken Meyer here to walk you through this particular prac. The thing to keep in mind here is the values of resistance, capacitance and inductance I have are probably going to be quite different to yours so you are going to end up with different actual measured results but the process and how it all works uh, remains the same. So first thing you need to do is do your risk assessment, um, identify some of the hazards, um, the supervision level that you'll use, uh, the risk class those hazards fall into and the control measures you're going to do to help um, mitigate and reduce some of that hazard. So here's our basic setup and I'll just change my cursor pointer to a pen. So uh, what we've got basically is over here we have a voltmeter permanently connected. You can see it in parallel across the supply. Then we have a inductor, a capacitor and a lamp as a resistor. So our inductor is at uh, 130, sorry, 1343 millihenries. Our capacitor is 20 microfarads and our resistor when it's operating because it actually glows we're giving us about 88 amps sorry 88 ohms hot. Our supply voltage is plugged into 24 and we're getting somewhere between 26 and 28 um, depending on the mains supply. Obviously it's at 50 Hertz. So we're going to be connecting these things in parallel and as you can see, I've got a capacitor and a resistor in parallel. If you follow the yellow wire, it goes from the start of the cap to the start of the resistor. And the uh, red one goes from the start, finish of the resistor to the finish of the cap. So they're in parallel. And then you can see the supply lines, the blue one connecting to one side and the white one then connecting to the other side. Putting both the voltmeter, the capacitor, and in this case, the lamp all in parallel with each other. So here's our circuit. Our first circuit, we're going to be putting a resistor and the capacitor in uh, parallel with each other. As I've already mentioned, here's our voltmeter. We have a supply at about 28 volts. Don't you dare. We're going to be using a clip-on ammeter for the supply and then we'll be clipping the ammeter around the resistor and around the capacitor legs to uh, measure the appropriate currents. So here's our actual setup and you'll notice that uh, we've got about 27 volts on our voltmeter at the moment. The blue lead is indicating the supply to the capacitor and the resistor in parallel. We're getting about 220 milliamps there. I'll just uh, underline that. So there's our 220 milliamps and I've put it down here in the table to make it really clear. Then I've measured the uh, capacitor current. So there's the, uh, the loop you can see here to the capacitor leg and again the display is telling us this there's about 90 milliamps in that leg and then finally our resistive leg you can see very clearly the uh, the lead to the resistive leg and it's pulling about 180 milliamps so of course um, there is a phase shift relationship the capacitor current is uh, at 90 degrees to the resistor and to see if this current actually works out is our total current then we'll need to do a phasor diagram so let's do that next so here's our our phasor diagram we have our voltage on the horizontal so the voltage is our reference 
of course. The next thing we need to worry about is our scale. And here I've chosen 5 milliamps per division. So that's 5 milliamps for every one of these little divisions. If we now plot the information we have, we, our resistance was 180 milliamps, so that's the red phaser, and I've plotted that from the origin along the horizontal to this point here. I've then plotted the current, so that's the current at 90 degrees lead on the voltage and on the resistance. Then I've simply transferred that over and top to tailed it out here. So I've top to tailed and got that point there. Then I've simply drawn a phase up from the origin back out to that point and that becomes the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle. And that's very close to 220 milliamps. So our 90 here and our 180 through our right angle triangle, very close to 220. So we have confirmed that a resistor and a capacitor in parallel measuring those currents um, are correct and 220 milliamps is very close to the total current. Um, if you want to get into some trigonometry, we could also uh, calculate the phase angle in here. So uh, next we're going to repeat the whole process again. We're going to have our 27 volt supply. Our ammeters are going to do the same measurements but this time we're going to replace the capacitor with an inductor so we're going to be looking for the current IL. Uh, we've already got the current IR, but we will measure it again. And then the overall current, which again we will re-measure with a clip-on ammeter. And also our inductor is uh, 1347 millihenries, and I did a little bit of calculation that worked out that the XL is 423 ohms while our resistor is at 88 ohms. So here is our three measurements. And again, you can see we're uh, just measuring the supply current here through the clip-on ammeter, and the display is giving us 190 milliamps. So we've got 190 milliamps for the total current. The inductor current, you can see we've now paralleled up the inductor rather than the capacitor. And I've put the uh, conductor loops through here for just the inductor branch. And uh, it's telling us there are 60 milliamps. Again, put that into our table. And then finally, we're measuring just the current to the lamp of our resistor and of course that hasn't changed, one would hope it hadn't, giving us a 180 milliamps. Of course the inductor current is not quite at 90 degrees, it's going to be something like 83 or um, sorry at uh, yeah 88 or 87 something in that order but we'll deal with that on the di next diagram. So let's have a look at the next slide. And here's our phaser diagram. And as you can see, I've allowed about three degrees. Um, to be honest, it's uh, just a estimate. I haven't bothered to measure what it was exactly, but I know it's around about two or three degrees. So first off, um, our voltage reference hasn't changed. I put in the 180 on the horizontal to represent the current in the um, lamp or the resistor. Then I put in the current here at 60 milliamps which we measured 
for the uh, current but you can see I've allowed about three degrees off horizontal because the internal resistance I've then simply picked up the current and I've top to tailed it um, into here so this is just a top to tail of the current at the same angle um, effectively giving me this point and then by drawing a vector or a phaser back from the origin to that point gives me something like a 190 milliamps um, little error there I obviously didn't backspace over my number it's 190 milliamps which can, again comes in very very close to um, the actual measurements and again the phaser diagram is confirming our measurements of currents around a resistive and inductive network now of course finally we uh, come to the third option and uh, this time we're going to have a capacitor and an inductor so our resistor has gone again our capacitor is 20 microfarads and I've worked out that it's XC is 160 ohms and our inductor is still 1347 millihenries with an XL of 423 ohms and our supply continues at about 27 odd volts again we're going to measure the currents using a clip on ammeter for the main supply there then the current and in the capacitor and then the current in the inductive legs so here's our measurement phase again measuring the total current here comes to about 50 milliamps then we measure the inductor here's our inductor in parallel with our capacitor so you can see I'm measuring the inductive leg here by picking up both the blue and the red wire in this particular case and it's telling us we've got about 60 milliamps flowing in the inductive leg and then finally in the capacitive leg on this occasion it's telling us about 100 milliamps which was very close to the same as uh, last time I think it said 90 last time it's only 100 this time just depends where you catch the clip on multimeter clip on ammeter I should say okay so there's our measurements so let's have a look at our phaser diagram that uh, represents what's going on here so here's our IC it's the green phaser at 90 degrees vertical at 90 milliamps our IL here at 60 and about 3 degrees off center making that about um, 87 degrees the yellow phase it just represents the tip to tail of the IL so this is just the IL tip to tailed and of course it's going to give us a value about here and if you scale it off you get about 50 milliamps scaled off there about 50 milliamps on our scales so if that's 90 a bit over 30 30 would be down here somewhere so that's pretty close to 50 milliamps and of course in here would be our phase angle and that phase angle looks something like you know somewhere in the order of about 80 degrees at a at a simple um, estimate that's all I've done there so as you can see putting a capacitor 
and an inductor in parallel. We do have the phasor diagram again configuring, sorry, the phasor diagram confirming the measurements around our circuit. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, practical number one. It gives you some idea of what phasor diagram should look like, the kind of results uh, from a measurement perspective you might get from your circuit. But as I mentioned at the beginning of uh, this particular presentation, uh, your results will be a little bit different to mine, but the actual practical application and the drawing of the phase diagrams would be the same.